All right, so 8.6 was kind of like proving, or sorry, identifying the special parallel or quadrilaterals. So kind of taking everything that we talked about in the chapter, putting it in together. And so this is true or false. The diagonals of a rectangle are perpendicular. So in order to answer all of these, you basically have to just really know all those properties really well. So is that true? Are the diagonals of a rectangle perpendicular? False. Okay. What are they? We know they're congruent, okay? So just be careful. This is false. Can they be? Yes. Must they be? No. Okay? The diagonals of a rhombus are congruent. True or false? False. What do I know about the diagonals of a rhombus? They're perpendicular. So if you had switched those, then it would have been true. Number three says one pair of opposite angles of a kite are congruent. True or false? True, okay, the two angles where the non-congruent sides meet, right? So if these are congruent and these are congruent, then this angle is congruent to this angle. On a kite, these angles can't be congruent because then it's a parallelogram and a kite's not a parallelogram. Number four says give the most specific name for the quadrilateral and explain. So what information do you know about this quadrilateral based on the diagram? Chris? Opposite angles are congruent, which makes it what? A parallelogram, right? So if I only had that, that's all I'd know. Does that make sense? But what else are you given? Two adjacent sides or consecutive sides are congruent. So now it's a parallelogram, which already has opposite sides congruent, yes? And now I'm saying the consecutive sides are congruent. So what type of shape is this? A rhombus. Okay, so by the angles opposite them being congruent, I know that the sides opposite each other must also be congruent. And if consecutive sides are congruent, now it's a rhombus. So, on a kite, you can't have like two pairs of opposite angles congruent. Correct. So that the pair where the on a kite. Okay, number five says points A are one four. So I would put my point A. Uh, B is 6, negative 1. C is 1, negative 6. And D is negative 4, negative 1. It says those are the vertices of the quadrilateral. Give the most specific name for this quadrilateral. So I heard it looks like a square. Is that what you said, right? So how could I prove it's a square? What would have to be true in order for this to be a square? All the sides would have to be congruent. Right angles. And you'd have to have four right angles. Okay. How could I show that all the sides are congruent? Well, they... No, that's going to show me that they're parallel. Distance. 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 Okay, so I can do that. So I can find the, use the distance formula, and I'd have to do it three times. I'd have to find the distance formula here, 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 here. And none of these are horizontal or vertical, which would have made this step a little bit easier. So I'm going to do A, B first. So X2... Or sorry, x yeah, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I get 5 squared plus a negative 5 squared. 25 plus 25 square root of 50. So that's AB. And I, I don't need to simplify because I'm using these to compare. If it asked me what the length was, then I would actually simplify that. So then I would do BC. So 1 minus 6 squared plus negative 6 minus a negative 1 becomes 1 squared. Negative 5 squared plus negative 5 squared. 25 plus 25, square root of 50. So I already know that AB is congruent to BC. So again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. If I had proven that the opposite sides were parallel by using the slope, and that I would have known it's already a parallelogram, and then the consecutive sides, I could have already shown this as a rhombus, okay? So there's a couple of different ways to do it. But we think more specifically this is a square. So I'm going to keep going. CD would be negative 4 minus 1 squared plus negative 1 minus a negative 6, which is 6 squared. Again, negative 5 squared plus 5 squared. So this is the square root of 50 also. Now I know this is congruent. And then the last side is AD. 
So negative 4 minus 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 4 squared, negative 5 squared, plus negative 5 squared, and I'm back to square root 50. So now I've got four congruent sides, so I know this is at least a rhombus, but we think it's probably a square, which means I have to show that these are right angles. How can I show... Uh, yeah, you could pull out the protractor that's in your pocket and prove it. Yeah. If you didn't, let's say you didn't have a protractor in your pocket, how else could you prove it? Okay, you could prove the diagonals are congruent, so that's one way. So I can, this time it would be easy, right? These are, it's a vertical and a horizontal line. So I could count from negative 4 to 6, this is 10, and from negative 6 to 4, this is also 10. Now my diagonals are congruent, so I just proved it's a rhombus and a rectangle, and if it's a rhombus and a rectangle, it's a square. How else could you have done it? Evan. Find that the sides are perpendicular. So I could have found the slope of these lines and shown that they were opposite reciprocals of each other. Does that make sense? Yeah? So a couple of different ways to do it. But you do need more than just the sides. The sides just shows it's a rhombus. And we can get more specific here. So if it's a rhombus and a square, then it, it's, I mean, sorry, if it's a rhombus and a rectangle, then it's a square. Questions on the warm-up? So the good thing is that section kind of forces you to review all the properties. All right, stuff out for the chapter review. So 8-1 was angles in a polygon. And you had a bunch of equations or formulas for this section, okay? We started with the sum of the interior angles. Which is what? Go ahead. N minus 2 times 180. That's the sum. Then from that, we could say each interior of a regular polygon. So it's got to be regular. What does regular mean? Equilateral and equal and equiangular. So this is now n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. Okay, then we did the sum of the exterior. what? 360 no matter how many sides. And each exterior of a regular polygon. And again, it's got to be regular. And this would be 360 divided by the number of sides. You also need to know all of the proper names of quadrilaterals, or I mean, sorry, of um, polygon, polygons from three sides up to 12 sides, skipping 11, right? So if I say octagon, you should know it has how many sides? Eight. Eight. Nonagon. Nine. Dodecagon. Nine. Heptagon. Seven. Hexagon. Six. Good. Pentagon. Quadrilateral. Four. I hope you know triangle. Three. That's the tricky one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in this section, and this was on your quiz, but in this section, you got things like find the sum of the interior angles of a octagon. And so you had to use the first one. Find an a and like one angle in an in a regular octagon. So then you would use the second one. And then you also got ones where it said, given uh, one angle in a regular polygon, 
is, I'm going to go easy just so that you can see this, 90 degrees, um, classify the polygon or find the number of sides. It can be written in a bunch of different ways. So this time you're given the actual angle measurement. So I would use this second equation. I would say that N minus 2 times 180 over N equals 90 degrees. So this time they're giving you the angle and they want the number of sides. Alexis. Um, when you Con it should be a convex regular. It won't be concave. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now I'm going to multiply both sides by N. So I'd get N times 2 times 180 equals 90N. Distribute the 180. I get 180N minus 360 equals 90N. Subtract the 180N. I get negative 360 equals negative 90N, and then divide both sides by negative 90. And N equals 4, which hopefully we, we know because it's quadrilateral. Obviously, it's not going to be that easy on your test, but I just want you to see the steps because the steps are exactly the same. Okay? What will change is the math might get a little bit harder. Nick? Can we do the one where it, says, it gives you like 3,000? Like so the, the, the process is exact. Oh, the sum you're saying? So if it gave you that the sum, and again, I'll just make it easy so we have numbers that are easier so we can do it faster, but the, the process is the same. If it says the sum of the interior is 360, then I would do N minus 2 times 180 equals 360. So you got to look for the words sum and each. If it's sum, then I don't divide by n. So this would be 180n minus 360 equals 360. Wait, you can't do this. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then I would add 360. 180n would equal 720. Divide both sides by 180. And then I would just keep reducing, like... Start by canceling through your zeros, and then you know those are both divisible by 9, so this would be 8 over 2, and then that's 4. So look for key terms like either sum or each. Sum is obviously not going to be divided by n. Each is. And then look for interior versus exterior. Interior is the n minus 2 times 180, and exterior is your 360. And then you'll see in the review, you'll get like if you have a diagram and it gives you four of the five angles, you'd have to figure out what they should add up to and then subtract the four from it to get what's left. Okay? That's something that you could see in this one. Some of it, and I know that it's tedious, I would do it again. Okay? So start with quadrilaterals. So what do we know about a quadrilateral? Four sides. What else? There's one more thing you know. What's true about all the angles? 360. Okay, then we get to parallelograms. So what are the properties of parallelograms? And there's five of them. Good. Definition would be opposite sides parallel. What's another one? Opposite sides congruent. What's another one? Good. Opposite angles congruent. Fourth one. Good. And the last one. Good. Diagonal. 
diagonals bisect each other. No, it means that, like, because if you had, if you could picture a parallelogram, the slant, more slanted it is, the more different your diagonals are going to be in length. So all this means is that this one would equal this one, and that's a really bad drawing because it doesn't look like it, but that one would equal that one, and these two would equal each other, not necessarily the, the diagonals are congruent. Okay, properties of a rhombus or rhombuses. Four congruent sides. So that's the definition, right? It's got to be a parallelogram that's got four congruent sides. Diagonals bisect opposite angles. One more. Good. God bless you. Diagonals are perpendicular. Perpendicular. Plus all the stuff about a property, about the parallelograms, right? So this stuff all trickles down. So obviously a rhombus has four sides. The interior angles would sum to 360. The opposite sides are parallel. The opposite sides are congruent. The opposite angles are congruent. The consecutive angles would be supplementary and the diagonals bisect each other. And then you add... The four sides are congruent, the diagonals bisect the opposite angles, and the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, and then rectangles got cut off, but that said properties before I cut it off. Properties of a rectangle. So what's true about a rectangle? And good. So that's true because the parallelogram, it's a parallelogram, right? Diagonals are congruent. So all the stuff in parallelogram also trickles down into a rectangle. So all this stuff is true for this, all the stuff is true for this. And then what's true about a square? All of it, okay? So if a rhombus and a rectangle had a baby, it'd be a square. Four congruent sides, four right angles, diagonals that bisect opposite angles, diagonals are perpendicular, and diagonals are congruent. <coughs> Questions so far? All right, then we had trapezoids and kites. So if you notice, like, by the coloring of it, the trapezoids and the kites still lie in the gray, which means they are still quadrilaterals, right? So they still have four sides and some to 360 degrees, okay? But they do not overlap with parallelograms, which means none of the properties of parallelograms are going to automatically apply to trapezoids or kites, okay? So what is, by definition, what's a, a trapezoid? Good. Only one pair or exactly one pair of sides, of opposite sides, sorry. And then we had isosceles trapezoids, which gets a little bit more specific. What's an isosceles trapezoid? So obviously the, the parts of a trapezoid um, are still, like you still have obviously two. All you've got is this. So if this is just a regular trapezoid, then you have the one pair of opposite sides. And then you've got that these consecutive angles, because these are parallel lines, these consecutive angles here would be supplementary. So consecutive uh, 
are supplementary, but only the ones along that one, only the ones that are along the um, parallel lines. So this angle here is not supplementary to that one. All right, and then we had specific isosceles trapezoids. So an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid with the non-parallel sides congruent. So now I've got a trapezoid, and these two sides would be congruent. Those sides are called legs. And the angle where those two sides meet the parallel sides are called base angles. So these are base angles, and these are base angles. And the base angles are congruent. Also in an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals are congruent. Okay, also in an, a trapezoid, you have something called the mid-segment, which is the segment that connects the midpoint of the non-parallel side. So this is the mid-segment. And we learned that the mid-segment is parallel to the bases, so the top and the bottom of this parallelogram, of this trapezoid, sorry, and it's equal to half the sum of the two bases. Okay, and then the last quadrilateral is a kite. So this has um, both pairs of consecutive sides. congruent. And a kite looks like if we could picture a kite that would fly in the air. This would be congruent to this and this to this. And then we know from a kite that the diagonals are perpendicular. And one pair opposite angles are congruent. And it's the pair where the two congruent sides do not meet. So that's all of the properties of all the quadrilaterals. It's a lot of stuff, all the parallelograms um, that you need to know for the review. So your review assignment is on Canvas, uh, and then we'll go over that in class tomorrow.